Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Rotation Proof Sultai Reanimator. Welcome back, everybody, to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. It's great to have you guys here. I am excited because today we are playing one of my favorite archetypes. We're making it rotation proof and we're trying some new stuff. I say new stuff, just different stuff, maybe. Uh, this is Sultai Reanimator, but again, it is rotation proof. So this, uh, all, all of this deck. Uh, will be perfectly reasonable to play even after the rotation. Uh, the idea is very simple. We're trying to reanimate some big stuff. Uh, as for what big stuff we have to reanimate, in the uh, the really high up slot, we've got two Jenga Taxis, one of the biggest game ending kind of cards that I have seen. Uh, in practice, I've, I've played two games in practice. One I lost, one I won. The one I won, I literally got Jenga Taxis down and the opponent gave up immediately. <laughs> Uh, so I do think there's a lot to this card. I think it's a really good one. Uh, Tox Roll is hugely powerful against a lot of the opposing creature decks, of course. Uh, and then Titan of Industry is kind of a good catch-all because it does a lot of different stuff. Uh, we do also have Consuming Blob, which is kind of a silly one, but uh, it does actually spit out extra oozes if they don't deal with it. Uh, and, and I think that's pretty reasonable. It also gets more powerful the more cards we have in the graveyard, which is certainly something we're trying to do anyway. Uh, Old Rutstein is also in here as a way to self-mill a little bit and get some extra value. Uh, a lot of the early turns of the deck are based on drawing or getting stuff into the graveyard. So we've got Otherworldly Gaze, we've got Tainted Indulgence, Thirst for Discovery, all of which are going to help us kind of push cards uh, into the graveyard as well as draw a lot or at least fix our draws. Uh, we do have Path of Peril and Meat Hook Massacre for early board uh, control uh, just to deal with whatever the opponent might be doing. Uh, the Celestis is here to help ramp us and give us a little extra white mana for that Path of Peril uh, so we can play it for the cleave cost if we need to. Our Reanimator spells of choice, we have four Graveyard Shift and three Diagraph Rebirth uh, for a full gambit of seven reanimation spells. That is quite a lot, uh, but I do think it's actually pretty important for us to ensure that we've got them. Uh, we did also up the land count to 25, uh, which means that it's going to be relatively easy to hit our land drops. And also worth noting, all of our reanimation targets are playable within the deck as is. So if we can just control the game in the early turns, uh, we can actually just like naturally draw into, you know, consuming blobs, titans, things like that. So uh, there is a way where we don't even have to reanimate. We actually can just play these cards. And I'm kind of curious to see if we end up doing that. So all that to say, guys, it's going to be an interesting one we're gonna give it a shot hopefully have some fun this is one of my all-time favorite archetypes uh and so we're we're gonna enjoy this one let's jump right in guys let's see how it goes all right guys and here we are for game number one this is definitely a relatively easy keep obviously not a ton of powerhouse stuff in the early hand but we have everything we actually want so i am gonna lead with this we can otherworldly gaze uh whenever we see the time uh which is now so let's go ahead and do that uh, what, if anything, do we want to throw into the graveyard here? Um, it might just, uh, it might be the Tainted Indulgence as well. I do like the old Rutstein, so I'm going to plan to keep that, uh, just in case here. We can go ahead and play Rafine's Tower and then just pass. Uh, so next turn we do have old Rutstein if we'd like to go ahead and play that out, which I think we probably will. Uh, and then Thirst for Discovery. <laughs> wow, another old Rutstein. Interesting. All right, well, let's go ahead and play this out. Uh, we'll go ahead and get a mill. There's a Diagraph Rebirth, which does give us that blood token. That's part of the reason I went for the Rebirth, by the way, is that it does include the flashback uh, ability, which I think is really important for a deck like this. And so I'm very happy to see that. Uh, there's a, uh, a way of ramping as well. All right, so. Hmm. I am actually going to go ahead and do this. Uh, let's see what we get. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so we'll throw a thirst back and this. Um, I think we're going to end up doing that. I want to hold on to the meat hook uh, naturally. Um, so we'll we'll see what we end up doing here. Uh, I'd love to be able to just um, meat hook for quite a bit here. Worth noting that Luminarch Aspirant is going to make it a little difficult to catch up in that regard. Uh, but it might be worth it just to get the Luminarch Aspirant and the token off of the board. Um, we'll see. Let's go ahead and do this now. 
Uh, if we had something in our graveyard, I would be much more apt to keeping the treasure token around for the Diagraph Rebirth, but currently we really don't have any major players in the graveyard, so I think I'm okay with just kind of letting this be, and we get another one anyway. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Um, so we could do this for four, uh, which really isn't worth it. I think instead we do this for two. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and meet hook for two. That gets a couple of these things off the board. It also just means they're not going to continuously throw counters here, uh, which is really crucial for us. Um, I think I will go ahead and otherworldly gaze as well. And oh, uh, yeah, both of those, fantastic. Um, we know we're going to mill this, uh, and so that is going to give us a treasure token, and we have the land. Uh, so it'll give us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is the exact cost we need for that Diagraph or Birth. Uh, we'll see which creature we want to pull, because um, there's honestly a good argument more, I think, for the Titan of Industry at this point, um, but we will see. Uh, do we Graveyard Shift or do we Rebirth? Uh, that's actually a really good question. Um, truthfully, I think we just wait in Graveyard Shift. Uh, am I wrong? Or should I just Meat Hook Massacre for one, two, three, four, five? Uh, I don't love these. Um, I'm actually going to do this. Uh, one, two, three, four. We're going to go ahead and do this. This is a bit of a safer play, but truthfully, I just want to get the other Righteous Valkyrie off the field um, and get them further down into their deck. So I know we're kind of taking a turn off here, but we want to make sure that in the when we get something down, that they really only have one or two things on the field. We don't want them to have a ton of extra stuff. Uh, yep, so they do gain some life here. That's very good. Um... All right. Cool. Uh, don't love that, of course, but we also did shut down the draw potential for them that turn, which was, I think, relatively important. Tox roll. So this is what I'm talking about. We actually can just play Tox roll, uh, which might be relevant. Uh, let's see. Um. No, I think it's going to end up being the Graveyard Shift for the Titan. Uh, so I think we're going to pass here. This is a pretty big, like, obvious, like, hey, we we definitely have something. <laughs> uh, but I'm curious to see. Yeah, they are going to attack first. Um, so we'll definitely get you. It could be the... No, I think this is the right play. All right, so... Uh, let's destroy an artifact or enchantment. Let's also... I think we'll maybe get the... Yeah, so we're going to kill this. We're going to get a 4-4 four four that can at least block the 2-2, two two, uh, which is the important thing here. So they are going to kill this. That's kind of fine. Uh, not great, of course, but it's a start. Uh, and so here we still at least get to deal with this. Uh, which is, you know, saving us a little bit of damage. It's obviously not a ton, but it's something. Um, and we actually do just have the... Uh, let's see, do we want to do anything here? No. All right. Uh, so, first things first, we definitely just attack in. Um, because we do need to keep them off of the uh, life gain here. Now the question is, do we go Tox Roll? I don't think so. I think we just pull the same trick twice and hope for the best. Um, yeah. Uh, smart of them to leave up that uh, removal spell, of course. Um, they have to be expecting this again. I, I can't imagine they're not. Uh, sure. Obviously don't love this, but uh, it's fine. Um, they are not going to get the buff up to the plus two, plus two off of this, which is good. Uh, Alright, so let's Graveyard Shift. Chances are they probably don't have much going on this time. Uh, so, let's... Uh, what do we want to do? Maybe Shield Counter and gain five? Or we could Titan. Or, uh, excuse me, um, throw this out. I think I'm going to gain five, though, honestly. 
Um, we'll turn it in. Alright. Uh, let's make sure we are blocking the uh, Righteous Valkyrie just so they're not gaining life anymore. Um, that five life gives us a little bit of a buffer, uh, which I think is worth it for sure. Um, and I think we can just pass. Excellent. Um, so, I mean, I think the play is just going to be do this for the Jenga Taxis. Yeah. Uh, this just seems like the probably most optimal play. Um, yeah, I think that's good. And we'll attack him for four here, given that this isn't really going to do too much regardless. Um, curious to see if they block. They do. Interesting. No? Okay. I was going to say, that's a bit of an interesting play. Toxroll may have been more apt to, to doing some more work here, because uh, it is worth noting that this diminishes the the power. Um, however, I think this protects us a lot more. Um, and so now we can start copying a lot of things as well. And they didn't even attack in, so that's very, very good. Um, excellent. Now, uh, we will... Go ahead and Tainted Indulgence first, I think. So this is going to copy, uh, which is phenomenal. All right. Uh, another Graveyard Shift. Okay, well, with that in mind, we definitely can discard the Toxtral because we can pull it back here. Um, excellent. Let's do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and Graveyard Shift for the Toxtral, uh, just so at the end of the turn, there's very little they can actually do. We obviously don't attack with Jenga Taxis, but we do get to attack here with this, uh, which is great. All right. Um, feeling pretty good, because this is going to start diminishing. The first thing they play each turn is just going to get... Oh, sure. That's fine. Um, that doesn't really bother me. It's a little annoying, because we would obviously like to keep the damage race going, but we're going to be very quickly diminishing most of what they're able to do. That's a great card, for sure. Um, but I'm not sure that it's going to pan out super well. Uh, very nice. Um, but we do get to just start diminishing everything that they're doing, essentially. Um, yeah, so that's gonna basically kill everything they're doing. Um... I mean, we'll play the Consuming Blob just because. Uh, we're kinda overcommitting a little bit here, but I think it's fine. Let's go ahead and Thirst. This does get copied. Um, what do we discard? I think you and... Probably just you. All right, uh, and then we get another draw three. We'll just discard one of you, that's fine. All right, um, so we can definitely attack with Tox rule. Uh, and I think I will just go for the Elspeth to see if we can get it off the field here. That's fine. Um, it's their, all of their board is about to die. Uh, so <laughs> that's really helpful. Um, and we get a lot of tokens, we get some life gain. I mean, <laughs> there we go, we got the win. That was absolutely perfect. A uh, little bit close, we did actually get pretty close to not winning that game, but I felt pretty good about it. So, uh, let's move into a game two, we may only get two, but we'll do the best we can. Check out this month's Patreon rewards, celebrating our return to Dominaria. If you want to pick these up, feel free to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash itresolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I think this is a relatively easy keep. We have the spells and we've got the otherworldly gaze. We also have the old Rutstein. So I feel like this is a perfectly reasonable start. Uh, hopefully we can get something into our graveyard off of that otherworldly gaze or the old Rutstein, and that'll give us the opportunity to reanimate early. Uh, we'll see, of course, but... Um, do we do that or do we just tainted indulgence? I think we tainted indulgence here. We're gonna go ahead and do it just because uh, they don't have a ton they can do. We'll get rid of the otherworldly gaze since we can. Um, all right, let's see what they wanna do. Wedding announcement. I feel like we are up against this card just constantly. <laughs> uh, it's fine, it's not a problem. Um, all right, let's do this. Let's make sure we get old Rutstein down. Uh, this is gonna mill a card. Perfectly fine, um, and we'll see if we can actually get somewhere. I'm curious if they have like a, I don't know, some kind of removal spell for the Rutstein. Um, a lot of these decks, of course, run things like Vanishing Burst, so it may be that they just don't, uh, which is fine by me. Um, but they can't attack in here, so they are just going to get two things. 
Perfect. Path of Peril, huh? <laughs> uh, Path of Peril is very good. Uh, specifically for what we're trying to do right now. Let's go ahead and do this. Just gonna sweep. <laughs> uh, let's make sure we attack in. Um, and I will go ahead and otherworldly gaze now, since we do have the graveyard shift in our hand. We'll throw both of those there, and we're gonna mill the land, which just means we get a creature. Or we get a treasure, excuse me. Uh, it is really nice. Otherworldly gaze with old Rutstein is just insane. Uh, this is fine. <laughs> this really doesn't matter at all. They do kill the old Rutstein, uh, but we're well prepared. We've got the lands in hand. It really isn't that big of a deal. So, let's do this. Uh, so now the question becomes, what do we do? Um, and I think the play is to wait because we can instant speed graveyard shift. So, I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, do we do anything about this? No. Okay. Cool. Easy enough. Uh, I assume they're going to plus up one of these, but it might be that they're plussing this up. Okay. Cool. Uh, this can't attack this turn, which is important to note. Alright. So we'll let them do this. I am going to go into full control just to be safe. I just want to make sure that we're not losing out on any opportunities here. Uh, fully expect them to have, like, a vanishing verse. Um, yeah, we'll pull you. Alright. We can jump out of full control mode now. Um, all right, so um, I think we do this and this. So we're gonna destroy the one that is going to give them a card draw opportunity because we don't want them to draw any cards. And we're gonna get a 4-4 out of the deal, uh, which means we can freely block one of these. Uh, excellent. So. Again, we kind of expected them to have the Vanishing Burst. That's not a surprise to me at all. Um, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and get a blob. Um, obviously, we can't really attack, so we'll just leave it up on defense. We'll get another little blob here. We did shut down the card draw, which is phenomenal because it just means they may not have that much. They will have the Rafine, so they do have options, but uh, it is worth noting that it's gonna be a little bit trickier for them to uh, deal with everything all at once, unless they're dealing with the whole board, obviously, uh, because they are behind on the resources that they would have gotten off of the wedding announcement. Uh, curious to see, interesting, okay. Yep. Uh, so we will block with the token on their token. Um, I think that's probably the safest bet. That just means if they have the seat of the empire, they will have to use it and still lose the creature. If we were to block with the rhino, they could just use a ganjo to, to kill it. Uh, so I think this is probably going to be the safest bet. They are heavily considering their options here, which is good. They should. Um, two wandering emperors. Wow. Huh. That's very interesting um, and a little scary, actually. So that might mean they have another one in hand. That also might mean they have a way of dealing with the entirety of the board. Uh, it can mean a lot of things. So I'm a little worried about that. Hmm. Let's see what they do. Okay, so they are going to minus one. Interesting. This Rafine is definitely a problem. One of the things this deck does not include is very much... Um... Oh. Hmm. Uh, it does not include a lot of uh, point-and-click removal, if that makes sense. Um... So... <laughs> we do expect them to have another Wandering Emperor, I think. <clears throat> uh, with that in mind, we attack them, not... Yeah, so we attack this way, uh, and if they go to exile the Consuming Blob, we bounce it? Is that correct? Potentially. 
So this is 12 damage that they are facing down. Um, we do have the ability to go ahead and Tainted Indulgence here and still leave this up. In fact, we actually could have Thirst, uh, which probably would have been better, but it's okay. All right. Um, I think we pass. We do get another blob out of the deal here as well, which is very good. All right, I'm curious to see what happens here. Um, so what this allows us to do is pay the ward cost to actually bounce the Rafine um, if we need to, which I think is pretty important um, because we certainly don't want them to have the Rafine. We also have lethal next turn, even if they deal with one of our creatures, which is very important, uh, given that they are a like wandering and burst style deck. Okay. Uh, so before attacks, we do this. We pay the ward cost. So it was good actually that we went for the tainted indulgence and not the uh, the other. Um, all right. So theoretically, this gets bounced. This isn't counterable. Ooh, this is a tricky game. A uh, very tricky game. So basically we're forcing them into making a decision. Okay, that's interesting. Fairy Vandal. Not a card I expected to see. It's kind of a funny one. They're gonna cycle, so they are gonna draw another card this turn. So they get to throw a counter on it, but that's fine. I don't particularly care about that. So this does get bounced. Basically what this means is they can't have a Wandering Emperor available, which means we know we're okay, at least on some level, to attack in. Um, I will do this first, just to see. I will actually get rid of that. Okay. Yeah, all right. So we definitely just attack in and actually, if they deal with the consuming blob just through damage, well, first of all, they would die, so I guess that doesn't really work. They actually literally have to block <laughs> like this. Um, I don't think we're as concerned about this anymore. Um, yep, let's do this. Old Rutstein. It's gonna mill a card. Oh, that's a good one. Man, if we had one more mana, we could uh, rebirth the Titan of Industry. <laughs> All right, I think we are reasonably well positioned. If they have a removal spell or like a sweeper, uh, that doesn't take us out of it. Okay. Uh, so like I said, this actually doesn't take us out of it. Okay. Um, it's annoying, 100%, but it doesn't mean we're out of it. Uh, we actually do have answers here, so. And they are very low. Um, Wish we could play this at instant speed. All right. Cool. Let's do it. Um, land is good. I will take land. All right, let's do this. I think we just take the Titan. I don't think we need to overthink too much. Uh, we will spread these things out here. So we're gonna blow this up and we're gonna get a 4-4 out of the deal. Uh, we will play land and I will go ahead and thirst. Um, <laughs> So good. Oh, if only we could play. Man, we should have done that in the reverse order, potentially. Um, but, I mean, Titan of Industry was obviously good enough. But, all right. So now, next turn, we just have Jenga Taxis, which means that if they do have any kind of, like, removal spell, uh, they're going to have to have two um, to be able to deal with anything, um, which is highly unlikely. Uh, but right now we just have trample anyway, so I'm not really concerned about it. They are just looking to draw, so they might be able to get something. Uh, and even if they do, it's fine. Cool. 100% just gonna block like this, not gonna overthink it. Uh, don't wanna risk the Titan. All right, here's to hoping. Uh, so what would get them out of this? I suppose a Wandering Emperor would still be quite good because they could block one thing and then exile the other. Uh, so that's perfectly reasonable. Um, do we go for this first? Yeah, I think so. 
right? Uh, because again, if they do have an instant speed spell of any kind, they're forced to use it now. Okay, so they're gonna bounce this back. Totally fine. Annoying, not the end of the world. Um, <laughs> we also just have Trample, and we only have to deal one damage. Granted, I guess they have Life Link, so there is that. Um, yeah. Okay. So that goes back to the hand, and then we just get to use it again. <laughs> sure. Uh, I am just gonna pull Jenga Taxis, and I also am just gonna attack everything here. So they can kill the 4-4 if they want, I don't particularly care. Um, yep. But that is gonna get through for some damage and kill the Rafine. They gain some life, which is fine. So now they can exile the Titan, but if they don't really have much else, they uh, they should be kind of kind of screwed here. <laughs> yep. So they are having to sack the, all of their resources basically to do this, um, and we can diagraph a birth on the uh, consuming blob to start spreading out again. And now they can't like they would have to have two sweepers to deal with everything. Uh, so <laughs> feeling relatively confident. Uh, this is going to be our last game, like I mentioned, guys. We are 100% running up on time, but uh, I I really like this. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I will attack because we have Diagraph or Births as options. I'm sure they have some flash speed thing here. Sure. Uh, that's fine. I don't particularly care. We actually can just replay this if they get to bounce it, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, we can also just Path of Peril if we want to get rid of this and basically give them nothing. Okay. Yep. Um, cool. So they do get to block, but that's it. Um, they're down to one card in hand. They do have nine life, which is worth noting. Uh, but we're going to grab this consuming blob. We actually get to copy and get the old Rutstein as well. Uh, one of the nice things about Jenga Taxis, you get to do multiple things. Awesome. Um, all right. I think we should be fine. All right. We definitely are fine. <laughs> uh, there's not a lot they could have here. Oh. Let's see this. Uh, this does get copied. Um, do that. All right. Um, <laughs> do that. So they did this for six. We got two sevens. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. So we're good, right? We just win. They have nothing left. We got to keep our two oozes, and we just get to attack with some blobs. <laughs> yes, guys, that was amazing. Undefeated, I know it was only two games, but that's an undefeated run with this deck. Let's talk about it. All right, guys, so again, Reanimator is one of my all-time favorite strategies. We've talked about a lot of Reanimator decks on the channel. We've played a lot of Reanimator decks on the channel, but this is the first one that is 100% rotation-proof, and it went undefeated over the course of only two games, but still, ooh, excuse me, very, very solid. Uh, highly recommend trying this out um, and, and seeing how it stacks up. I obviously think there's a lot of ways that you could smooth out the mana by using cards that are still in rotation right now, uh, but I think it's safe to say, uh, or safe to relatively assume, that Reanimator will still be in a relatively good spot uh, given rotation. I think this kind of shows how good it can be even without all of the mana smoothing, all those things. So I'm very happy with this. I absolutely loved it. Fantastically fun. Highly recommend trying it out. And guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time.